Aloha friends. If you are watching this video, that likely means that you're one of my students in one of my Kaplan University classes. Today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about the discussion posts and what my general expectations are. As you know, every instructor at Kaplan has a different set of expectations for their discussion forums, and I am not any different. But what may be different is this wonderful, fantastic document I have made for you called Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About Discussions in This Class, But Were Afraid to Ask. You'll find a PDF, a link to a PDF copy of this document at the beginning of every discussion forum in this course. So for this video, I'm just going to do a quick overview on some of my most important expectations. And I'm going to um, show you how I grade a little bit. And I'm going to urge you to make sure that you read this document completely because it will help you get an A. And if you want to get an A out of this course, you need to do a good job on your discussion post because they're worth a lot of points in this class. First, let me talk really quickly about the discussion assignment. Discussion assignments are super important to all humanities, but especially to uh, philosophies and anything having to do with critical thinking because this is how we work together to think through problems. We can't meet face to face. So we have to make a few concessions in order to make discussion actually happen on the discussion boards. Uh, one of the things I uh, take a lot of points off for is when, for example, a student posts all in one day and then never comes back to the discussion board. This means the student is interested in getting the points, but I'm not really interested in having a discussion. And we're trying to have a discussion more than we're trying to post, and that's the difference. It's very difficult to do online because we are all having to come back to the same space and post and read and think and engage over a series of days rather than being face to face during one period. So let me get to uh, some of the standards I look for and hopefully this will help you get straight A's through the rest of the term on the discussions. I expect that all students will post their initial discussion post and that's their first post that answers all of the questions, all of the prompts uh, in the discussion forum by Saturday at 11.59 p.m. Which means you also need to have made, uh, you had to have done all your readings first before you do the discussions because you need to have a concept or an understanding of the readings in order to do a good job on the discussions. Your initial discussion post should run about 150 words in length and I highly suggest that you compose your discussion post in a Microsoft Word document or in a Google document or something similar so that you can check for spelling errors and grammar errors and also to make sure you have a copy of that post before you post it online. I can't tell you how many students have written me over the years saying I thought for sure I posted it. I remember hitting post and then it didn't post. Well remember that the uh, Internet is not absolute, that just because it looks like something is going to submit doesn't necessarily mean it always happens. And you don't want to end up having to recompose that post. So do it in Microsoft Word, do it in Google Documents, and this way not only can you check your writing, but you also have a backup copy should something go wrong. In your initial post, I always expect that students um, either paraphrase or quote directly from the assigned readings of the week and that you use the quote in such a way that it is supporting your point of view. So don't let the quote speak for you. There's going to be another video um, available in the announcements ex uh, section that tells you how to use quotes well, but keep that in mind that every major initial discussion post needs either a quote or paraphrase from the assigned readings that supports your point of view. You are also asked to respond to at least two different classmates or myself. So you're going to have to have at least a combination of three posts every single week. And your response post should be at least four sentences in length. And they need to be engaging. So I don't want to hear response posts such as, oh man, that was awesome. Dude, I totally agree with you. Or for example, well, I disagree with you, but it's okay. These aren't real engaging posts, right? These are just ways to get words down on a piece of paper and walk away. I want you to engage your classmates or me with the question. 
So for example, you might ask follow-up questions. You might want to add additional information to the uh, original poster's information. There's lots of different ways that you can engage, but I'm looking for engagement. I expect that everybody will participate at least two separate days every week. If you want to get an A on this assignment, I am looking for that. If you participate just one day of the week, I consider that not real participation. It's more of a monologue than it is a dialogue, and we're trying for a dialogue. So make sure you read all of this information. I talk about uh, different ways in which you can engage. This is a wonderful section here about the different ways you can respond to your classmates to become engaging in your discussion. As for my participation in the discussions, I'll be around three days each week. Usually I am here participating in the discussion on two weekdays and one weekend days. I will respond to a percentage of students every week, but not every single student in the discussion. There are anywhere from 30 to almost 40 of you a week, and I teach several classes. So it's kind of impossible for me to respond to everybody for every week. But I do rotate my responses, so there's a good chance you'll get a response from me. And with that said, you do need to know that I read everybody's initial response. So even if you're not getting a physical response from me in the discussion section, I am reading your response and you will get feedback at the end of the week. I often ask random questions to the group. You'll find this in the beginning of the discussion areas and sometimes peppered throughout the discussion as well. If you respond to one of these random follow-up questions, that will count as a response post. If I ask you a specific follow-up question, I'm expecting you to answer it. This is um, teacher-student engagement and it's an opportunity for me to have a teaching lesson with you. So take the time to answer it. This is uh, basically just an overview of the discussion board uh, participation rubrics. You can found, find this in your syllabus, and it's just a copy of that, what constitutes an A grade, a B grade, a C grade, and so on and so forth. But to be more specific than that, because I really do believe in transparency of the grading process, this section here of the document tells you how many points I take off if something is not happening in this assignment. For example, if your initial post was made after Saturday, two points are deducted. If you participated only once a week and this was on or before Saturday's deadline, five points are deducted. If you participate only once a week and this was after the Saturday deadline, six points are deducted. If your in-text citations are not in correct APA form, which is a requirement of Kaplan University, that's minus two points. If you forget to cite your information entirely, that's minus two points. If you don't refer back to the assigned reading using either a strong paraphrase or quote, that's minus three points. If I find one to four errors in writing, I deduct two points. If I find five or more errors in your writing, I will deduct three points. I'm not going to go through this whole list, but I want you to take a look at this list so that you know how I am grading your work. And I will also have this all documented when I give you feedback at the end of the week about how you did in your discussion forums. And that's it. I hope this quick video helped you better understand what I'm looking for in the discussion posts. And if you have any follow-up questions, please ask me. Of course, there's always emergencies. There's always exceptions to the rule. So if you can't participate or something is going on, you need to email me. That way I can make concessions for you and we can make arrangements. All right. Have a great week and I'll see you on the discussion boards. Aloha.